Okay, gang. Now, let's continue. Let's stick with the war thing, right? Uh, Joe Chicho, what about Oman, UAE, Qatar, Bahrain, Kuwait? All of them, as far as I see it, they're either orange or yellow, right? Like, all of these countries here, United Arab Emirates, uh, Dubai, Qatar, um, even Kuwait has been pretty quiet, right? But I would say they're orange. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Qatar, Qatar, right, was funding ISIS with Saudi Arabia, right, in Iraq, okay, in Syria. Now Qatar has been slowly trying to separate itself from Saudi Arabia, right? They even trash talk the Saudis a little bit, right? Now, what's going on in Qatar? Saudi Arabia is a war with Yemen, right? Qatar started banging heads with Saudi Arabia. So I would say United Arab Emirates has been quiet too. What's going on there? I think we're going to see some heads roll in there. Let's put orange on Qatar. Uh, Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. Mm, maybe we leave that alone for now, right? Maybe we leave that alone for now. Okay. And by the way, let me let me do one other thing that I wanted to do as well. Let's lay out what's really the what's going on with russia right how we came to be where we are okay how we came to be where we are let's start the clock into what we're seeing right now from the beginning of the century 2000 the year 2000 you can really start at 2001 right now check this out since 2001 this is what we have seen right this is what we have seen Okay. In 2001, we had 9-11, right? And the reaction of the Western world and the coalition, well, it was NATO and whatnot, was to go into Afghanistan. So in 2001, assuming people understand, uh, sure, assuming people understand 91, assuming people, okay, you know what? Let's, true, Cheryl, let's start the clock at the fall of the Berlin Wall, right? The dissolving of the USSR, okay? No, Cheryl, great point. Let's start it at the fall of the Berlin Wall, dissolving of USSR, right? So no more USSR, all the Soviet, should we start in uh, 19, uh, 1978? Should we start, okay, let's go back to the 1970s. And Soviet Af okay Cheryl let's go back to the 1970s <laughs> Cheryl's like no you got to go back further <laughs> uncharted days Chicho in your opinion what country has the best foreign policy in my opinion which country has the best foreign policy I think uh, uh, best foreign policy is probably the ones that don't have a foreign policy and stay out of everything right stay out of everything personally for me a country that I have respect for, it has a serious problems. I don't want to live under dictatorship, centralized power, communism, or anything. But one of the countries that has treats other countries with respect in large part is Cuba. Cuba doesn't export weapons, Cuba exports doctors, right? So Cuba in large part, I know, I know South America, they try to push the communism agenda and stuff like this but you have to understand cuba was known as a whorehouse of the americas before the cuban revolution and it was a huge improvement for the cuban people when they kicked out the mafia and the cia from cuba no ifs or buts about it it was basically cuba was basically 100 percent illiterate and after the cuban revolution 10 years later it was almost 15 years later it was almost 100 percent literate right huge difference right we're not going to talk about the goods and bads of cuba in large part but when it comes to what, uh, as, oh, what was the question? Uh, as Uncharted 8 says, 
which country has the best foreign policy i think countries should help out other countries by sending doctors and teachers and aid when they can without any strings attached we're not talking u.s aid where oh we're gonna send you food but you gotta buy it from Mon you know monsanto cra monsanto affiliated or bear now or whoever big agro business okay so to a degree that iceland wasn't bad until it it did whatever the world economic forum wanted to do right could we later in short or long map out the yemen war or there in my uh, as here in my country media is nearly thank you very much for the follow only blitz uh as here in my country media is nearly never talking about it a war largely ignored by the international public i guess yeah uh yemen is obama obama's war right mass starvation lots of kids dying uh, they say it's a civil war but it's not a civil war it's a proxy war okay it was uh, instigated by saudi arabia and united states brett slinger thank you very much for the sub appreciate it uh, how many months 18 months street salute Thank you for being here so it's it was obama's war right it's horrendous what happened in yemen and what is happening in yemen is horrendous and by the way yemen kicked the shit out of saudi arabia like literally kicked the shit out of them just like the afghanis kicked the shit out of the soviet union and the united states okay like literally people in sandals and bare feet destroying multi-million dollar weapons western weapons what do you think russia is going to do with all those weapons annihilation right so we could go down and it's crazy i mean obama assassinated two american citizens in yemen right without drone assassinated crazy crazy the more we go back the deeper we understand the more we go okay let me give you a lowdown switzerland first time chad hand of malice switzerland bankers wars smedley butler said it all wars are bankers wars and where's where's where is there a lot of bankers switzerland right cheryl just so much context that is missed or ignored but so important so important um okay let's okay i'm gonna let's start the clock uh plutonic says afghanistan a satellite state of the soviet union and as a proxy war for the u.s then ruled by uh islamists then ruled by u.s secured government in kabul and tribes and islamists uh everywhere else after 20 years of western intervention back in the yeah so check this out okay let's go to afghanistan okay to understand Afghanistan, you gotta understand Brzezinski. And whoever controls Eurasia controls the world, right? Now, Unical pipeline, you got major resources here, as much, well, not as much, but major resources are a lot of the resources that are available in Africa are also available here. It's just major conflict zones, right? So in the 1970s, there was more of a communist uh ussr backed government in afghanistan okay and what happened was the united states started funding the the opposition party in afghanistan and there was a coup attempt in large part in afghanistan okay now what basically happened was the ussr started supporting the afghan regime there and it was a regime okay there and they started the united states started basically in large part the western world really started to basically poke a stick in a hornet's nest right because who they were supporting here in the late 1970s and all the way in, into the 80s were 
the Islamists, the fanatics, Al Qaeda, if you want to call it. Al Qaeda was a CIA drive word, right? Al Qaeda means base, right? So basically, it was Wahhabi sect that had gone from Saudi Arabia, planted their bases, okay, in Afghanistan, set up schools. Schools are ridiculously important, people. Ridiculously important, right? This is how it all begins. That's why. The globalists are taking control of our education system, right? That's why we should not be sending our kids to our centralized indoctrination centers. So the Wahhabi sects, that's one thing Saudi Arabia exports a lot of. Not just oil, but the Wahhabism, right? The fanaticism. They have schools in all over Africa. One of the first places they started was Afghanistan, right? So they set up their bases there, start training a lot of Islamists. They have mosques, they have schools. United States tag teams with them, starts giving them fucking weapons, right? During the Russian occupation of Afghanistan, right? Russia, it becomes a black hole, right? Russia loses a lot of people there, loses a lot of military hardware, and it's not going well for them. It's draining USSR's resources, and there's all this other stuff going on, and we're on the verge of the collapse of the Soviet bloc, Soviet Union, right? And this, basically, Afghanistan is the last place empires go to die, right? And USSR went in there, a lot of pressure. They ended up pulling out the government. Now, this is the difference between the USSR, what USSR was doing here, and what the United States did here, right? When USSR pulled out of Afghanistan, they didn't pull out overnight, like the way the Bidens, you, United States was in here 20 fucking years, right? USSR was in Afghanistan, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Cheryl, seven years, eight years, five years, six years, somewhere around there, less than 10 years, U, USSR was in Afghanistan, right? United States was in Afghanistan 20 years. United States had to pull out overnight, leaving hardware, leaving bases, getting the F out leaving a lot of their collaborators there to die under the under the hands of the Taliban, purging going on galore, right? That's how United States left. When the USSR left, nine years, thank you, Joe. USSR was in Afghanistan nine years, right? When they left, it was organized, they pulled all their hardware out, bases closed down, and the government that they left there was still in power for a number of months, right? So, Joe, uh, USSR was there from December 24th, 1979 to February 15, 1989. So, 10 years, let's say. 10 years, right? Oh, nine, nine years. Nine years and a couple of months, right? Okay. So, they left the government there that was stable for at least a few months, right? And then the Islamists took it over. There was a coup. And we got the beginning of Al-Qaeda, right? We got the beginning of the Islamists, uh, the Mujahideen, right? The Mujahideen, the yeah, the Mujahideen, right? The the ones that flew over to Washington, right? All those, the birth of ISIS and stuff like that. They flew over to Washington, met met with Ronald Reagan in the 1980s. Ronald Reagan compared them to the to the founding fathers of the United States of America, right? You follow this? This is how close Mujahideen, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and how long their relationship has been together started in Afghanistan, and the United States government called them, compared them to the founding fathers of the United States of America. Okay. This is 1980s. Right, nineteen end of nineteen eighties, USSR collapses. They make a deal. USSR, Gorbachev make a deal with the United States, right? Saying, okay, we're not gonna militarily occupy any of the Eastern Bloc countries. We're gonna pull out. You make a promise that NATO does not move one inch to the east. Doesn't move one inch to the east. Thank you very much for the follow, Rosa. Appreciate it. Okay, so. NATO or United States promises Russia that NATO is not going to move one inch to the east. Okay, this is late eight, late eighties, and USSR pulls 
you, Russia pulls out, USSR block collapses, Warsaw Pact is gone, right? Which is the main reason that NATO existed, right? North Atlantic Treaty Organization existed to challenge the Warsaw Pact, right? So Russia, USSR collapses, Russia economically just fucking plummets, right? Plummets, right? Bush senior gets into power uh, and this is at the same time this needs to be cleared up as well right at the same time there's iraq iran war happening one of the most devastating wars in history one of the most brutal wars in history one of the most infuriating wars in history one of the reasons was europe and the united states the western powers were supplying saddam hussein with all the military hardware with all the information satellites including chemicals chemical weapons that iraq was using on iranians right iranians right in the 1980s right iraq ended up losing that war in large you could say it was a draw but iraq after that war economically was fucking devastated iran after the iran we could get in seriously we could talk about that for a long time i'm skipping over a lot of shit right iran after that war was fucking solidified solid the morale in iran was united states western governments using iraq with high-tech u.s western weaponry using chemical weapons that Iraq denied using, Western governments denied that Iraq was using, and everybody knew that they were using, right? Everybody knew that Iraq was using chemical weapons. Iran after that war, the Iranian population was like this, solid. Now, at the same time, there was purges going on in Iraq where they were getting rid of communists and stuff like this. That was after the Iranian revolution in 1978-79, right? So this war is crucial. Iraq economic turmoil, right? Economic turmoil. So that was saying needed a diversion. At the same time, oil prices were plummeted, right? Kuwait was doing slant oil drilling into Iraq, Iraqi reserves and dumping oil onto the markets, suppressing oil prices, right? Suppressing oil prices, okay? Going against what OPEC was saying. Okay. Iraq told the Kuwaiti installed puppets there stop doing this because Iraq needs money to build back its economy right because they just spent a shitload of money where did they spend it they buy weapons from the United States and Western countries so Iraq took all their oil profits all the oil money and they bought weapons from the Western governments right we're war-based economies Western world is a war-based economy especially the United States of America right and they needed oil prices to be fairly high for them to be able to stabilize the country again. Kuwait was going against that. Iraq met up with the Americans because Iraq, Saddam Hussein, was a CIA installed puppet. They put him in power in 1960 with a coup, right? And Iraq dropped a hint that they might go into Kuwait to prevent them from flooding the market with oil. The United States said, do whatever you want. Iraq took that as the green light for them to go into Kuwait. They went into Kuwait, oh, the shit at the fan. United States, Europe, oh, Iraq is invading Kuwait, blah, 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 right? We make a coalition of the willing at the time. No, a coalition of the willing they called in the, the second Gulf War, but basically under George Bush, right? They started the first Iraq war. Absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. The propaganda in that war was insane, right? Incubator babies. Just look that up and you'll see how ridiculous it was, right? By the way, gang, uh, uh, here, here in my country, we only heard in the media that Saddam Hussein is an evil dictator who, without any reason, attacked. Yeah, that's what they say. And without any support, he was an evil dictator, Saddam Hussein. Indeed, he was. Whose puppet was he? He was Western puppet. He was Western trained, Western installed puppet. So the puppet, was the puppet the true evil of what was happening or the people controlling the strings of the puppet, right? 
We, ha we have to consider that, right? That was gar By the way, when the first Gulf War happened, okay, the people that felt them seriously in the world, the people who felt, aside from Iraqis, the people who felt the most amount of pain for Iraqis were Iranians because they knew exactly what was going on. I talked with Iranians. Even though for eight years there was an Iraq-Iran war happening, that Iraqis, Saddam Hussein used chemical weapons on Iranians, killed Iranians. This region here, south of Iraq, they have the same religion as Iranians. They're the same people. The people in Iraq that were fighting Iranians during the 1980s, right? They didn't want to fight Iran. They were forced to fight Iran. They had no choice in it. They were cannon fodder, right? Very much the same shit that's happening in Ukraine right now, by the way. Okay. With the Ukrainian regime grabbing people off the streets and sending them to the front lines. Cannon fodder, right? So Iranians, I'm talking Iranians in Canada I was talking to, right? We all, because I, I, I was born, not, I was born there. I lived there. I lived very close to the Iraq-Iran border, right, when I was a kid. No one wanted to see that many Iraqis die and that to happen to them. No one. No Iranian. Meanwhile, the Western world was cheering the shit on, right? That's the level of empathy that the, the, the difference you see in the world from one part of the world to another part of the world. Okay. Unbelievable. So Iraq war happens. What happens? The United States, the coalition of willing or the Western allies set up a military base in the holiest site, the holiest country land for a certain segment of the Muslim world. The people in Afghanistan freak the fuck out, the Wahhabi sex, right? Because why the fuck are Western military setting up military, Western governments setting up a military base in Saudi Arabia to wage war on Muslims, right? So they go in there, they fucking chill. Look, look, look at the highway of death. Okay, look at the highway of. If you if you want to know what. The first Gulf War was about two things you need to look up. Incu incubator babies and look up the highway of death. Okay. And then compare it to what Russia's doing in Ukraine. Okay. And that should reveal to you, enlighten you as to what really is going on and how much propaganda the Western world is uh, under. Right. And how brainwashed most people are in the Western world. Right. So United States and the rest of the allies go in there and they don't remove Saddam Hussein because they realize they can't occupy the whole country. Right. They have hundreds of thousands of troops here, by the way, in Saudi Arabia and shit like this. They go in there, liberate Kuwait. How do they liberate Kuwait? They tell the Kuwaiti royalty that, hell, we'll put you back in power. But most of your wealth is not ours. Kuwaitis the royalty there they go well fuck we got nothing right now might as well give give whatever we got to the western powers to stay to get our little piece of chunk of control back right and for 10 years right so iraq war number one 1991 during the clinton administration you see balkanization here yugoslavia breaks down nato fucking wages war in europe again with yugoslavia destroying yugoslavia Fucking the propaganda coming on the war they needed to wage and Serbia was unbelievable. You know, NATO bombs uh, Chinese television stations in Serbia and Yugoslavia because they don't need crazy shit going on. So since the collapse of the USSR in the late 1980s, what basically happened was when Russia collapse economically and during that time in the 1990s russia like literally economically completely collapsed annihilated right i've mentioned this before people were selling their underwear in the streets because they needed to buy food people in the eastern bloc countries under the ussr were cutting down telephone poles because they needed wood to heat their homes 
in the winter right they were burning everything and anything to heat themselves in the winter right well uh plutonic first says why was serbia targeted yugoslavia was targeted because it was the balkanization of the region to on their way to wage war on russia right they need to divide everyone break people up into dif different ethnic groups that way they can control them same kind of shit they did in africa right so it was basically nato wanting to move east even though they promised ussr they wouldn't move east right so in the 1990s russia had completely collapsed uh it, it was a joke you had people from united states from washington uh from new york i know this because i we had family member they used to travel to russia a lot right and he said one time it was in uh, los angeles at the time and he told a story where he was at the moscow airport and a private jet landed in a moscow airport and this guy was a merchant right this guy was a merchant and he knew his shit he traveled all around the world did a lot of dealings and stuff like this he said he was he was in the moscow airport and a private jet landed on the tarmac and a whole shitload of anaskazi uh jews the the ones with the hair like this got out of the plane right and they went into moscow he knows this because they had a lot of connections what they ended up doing was they went to the moscow museum they walked around and they said they want that piece that piece that piece that piece that piece so russia was being looted like literally looted just the way any empire goes into any country and loots artifacts from that region for example a lot of countries in africa and the middle east have disputes with london right now museums in london wanting their artifacts back right so in the 1990s a lot of people from the western world were going into Mos uh, into russia and looting the nation right so not only just art like priceless art they were they were paying like a chump change like a few thousand dollars to buy this priceless piece of painting or any type of art that would be worth millions in the western world if they could get it out right crazy they were also doing this to companies like oil companies mining companies industrial companies factories right they destroyed the economy factories were closing down bare bones they were going in there and buying these factories and the rights for regions to extract resources just the way we talked about sierra leone that the mining company in canada and uk then the last stream that we did they were getting all these resources for chunk change pennies on the dollar that gave rise to russian oligarchs so russia in the 1990s turned into a complete oligarchy with the general population impoverished alcoholism through the roof drug addiction through the roof remember afghanistan produces 80 90 percent of the world's opium heroin flooding into russia flooding into russia right annihilated okay at the end of the 1990s 2000 who comes into play putin putin comes into play right i'm just going to read a couple of uh things a divide and conquer i'm just going to really scan this really quick uh da, 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 just see if i missed anything important cheryl even though i have a hard time not referring to the region as yugoslavia it's weird to hear someone else say it yeah yeah uh, 99 russia wasn't ready to fence her no in 1999 russia couldn't do anything russia was co completely collapsed military was in shambles economy was in shambles food stocks were in shambles could uh industry was was completely destroyed it was it was very difficult to even extract oil resources out of there right but it created the oligarchs right what happens at the end of that in 2000 putin comes into play Putin comes in and he's a nationalist. He believes in Russian identity, right? And he builds back the country. How long does it take him to build back the country? Well, you could say it took Putin, okay, and the people that really gave a shit about Russia 20 years to build back Russia. Because when Putin comes into power, since the beginning of the century and this is where we began cheryl since you kicked us back into the 1970s right and i glossed over a shitload of stuff right in 2000 right 
at the beginning of two, in 2000, basically 2000, 2001, Putin comes into play. No one knows who he is, but he's a Russian. He believes in the Russian identity, right? In 2001, we get 9-11. In 2001, we get Western governments going into Afghanistan and Patriot Act being passed. Patriot Act to me was the trigger that really laid out everything else that we are right now, right? They go into Afghanistan. Dumbest fucking move the Western governments have ever made. Afghanistan is the empire killer, right? It's the empire killer. They go in there. In 2001, they go into Afghanistan. They occupy Afghanistan. They put their own puppet in power. The person they put into power was working for Unicalf with pipelines going up here. They wanted to build the pipelines, build a connection. They thought they had it all, all the resources. And Afghanistan is a shitload of resources. Lithium, I've heard a lot of it, right? And other things, right? And you got Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, uh, Kyrgyzstan, uh, uh, Kazakhstan, and all this jazz, right? I know these places have resources because when I was doing geophysics in the 1990s, we had one of our geophysics members doing geophysics work here for the resources, right? Okay. Now, they get into Afghanistan. They think they got it all sorted out. Bush Jr., little puppet, Dick Cheney calling the shots, okay? Afghanistan was a prize they got, right? Or they thought they got. But they also weren't done in Iraq. They want Iraq as well, right? So Bush Jr. in 2003, they build up the case, yellow cake and shit coming out of Sudan by, they put Colin Powell, the UN, flipping his, said anybody that knew anything knew that Iraq was not building weapons of mass destruction. One of the reasons you knew this, because if you were following Scott Ritter, Scott Ritter was a weapons inspector, because in the 1990s, I glossed over this, in the 1990s, 10 years of sanctions, 12 years of sanctions on Iraq devastated Iraq. They couldn't even get pencils into the country because under the umbrella of sanctions, we can't give Iraq anything that they can't build. Can't, they can't build any weapons of mass destruction. The lead inside pencils was sanctioned. So they couldn't even get pencils into Iraq, right? Medicine into Iraq, okay? You had Madeleine Albright being asked, right? If Madeleine Albright, you, United States, being asked that if she thought, thank you very much for the follow, Biggie. Uh, if she thought, because during those times, the sanctions in the 1990s, half a million Iraqi children died because they couldn't get medical attention. And they asked Madeleine Albright on 60 minutes of all places if she thought the price was worth it. And she said, yeah, we thought the part, we think the price is worth it. That half a million children in Iraq should die because they can't get any medicine because of the sanctions and the constant bombings. You got it? Compare that to what's going on in Ukraine, right? Just keep that in mind. Now, Bush Jr., Cheney regime, they decide to go into Iraq, build another coalition of the well, the coalition of the willing is 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 in Iraq War II, right? Put the military base in Saudi Arabia again coming in there going into Iraq hardcore occupy Iraq put their whatever puppets and power dismantled the military some of the worst Wolfowitz was one of the people that did this to one of the worst decisions military operations in human history the way it was conducted in Iraq basically it gave all of southern Iraq to Iran because Iran has really influence in iraq so what the united states did there made iran even that much more powerful right united states didn't pull overnight out of iraq because they're still there so you what united states is still there war waging under bush cheney regime for the early to for the early to mid to late 2000s right and then obama comes into play Right, so this is what we got so far 2001 Afghanistan, 2003 Iraq. Right, you have pressure being put on Syria now, Lebanon is being pressured. Right, 
And then you have so so called the uh, peace presidents coming in, peace president coming in Obama. You got a peace Pulitzer Prize, whatever the hell it's called, right? The clown show, the clown piece of paper they hand these people. Obama. Obama comes into power. People think the the anti-war movement goes away, right? In 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 Canada, the United States, they go away. Why did they go away? I think because a lot of the anti-war movement were racist because they thought a black person coming into power in the United States was going to be peaceful, right? Obama comes in, wages war on Syria. Watch this. Escalates in Afghanistan. Escalation. Boom. More military, more hardware, more soldiers in Afghanistan. Escalates in Iraq. Starts a war in Syria, starts a war in Yemen, bombs the living daylights out of Syria, and continues military oper operations in Somalia, supports the coup in Ukraine. This is Obama. People think Bush and Cheney were bad. Obama was 10 times worse. Bush and Cheney, Afghanistan and Iraq, Obama. Afghanistan, Iraq, Yemen, Somalia, Libya, Ukraine. Got it? Got it? Okay. Throughout all this time, NATO was moving east. Throughout all this time, Putin is in power. Okay. One of the main catalysts that made Russia realize what was going on is what happened in Libya. In the UN, the Western countries wanted to put a no-fly zone over Libya. And USSR was resisting as best as they could, but they couldn't resist any more than that. And then the Russian representative of the UN, I believe, walked out of the UN meeting. The Western world put no-fly zone over Libya, and they took that right no-fly zone over Libya because protecting people from innocent civilians from taking viagra look into that shit it'll make you vomit the propaganda it's unbelievable right and they gave they took that as no fly zone as a green lit to annihilate libya and they annihilated libya now look into libya history of libya how much it had before the annihilation of libya obama and what it has now it'll make you want to vomit okay nato continues to move east Russia under Putin is waging war on the oligarchs. Oligarchs start leaving. He arrests some of them, seizes their assets. Oligarchs, the people who made their money from selling Russia's history, Russia's resources, Russia's people to the Western world. That's how a lot of these oligarchs made their money in the 1990s. Russia eliminates the oligarchs that made their wealth billions on the backs of the Russian people, right? Putin continues to build stronger military, stronger financial system, consolidates more power, eliminates the oligarchs, okay? Starts making allegiances around the world, okay? Starts knowing that resources are really the backbone of an economy starts building up the resources starts giving people land to come farm in russia at the same time you got south africa collapsing right the end of apartheid happened in 1990s i believe right end of apartheid happens right south africa is as a, as a pale reflect, well, it, it's in trouble, right? A lot of farmers, some farmers in South Africa are given land in Russia to go to Russia and farm for free. We give you land if you can come and farm. Russia solidifies Russia, makes it more powerful because it knows NATO is coming for it and there's no way they're going to go back to the 90s, right? Russia could not defend, do anything about what happened in Ukraine in the 2014 coup when NATO uh, got rid of a democratically elected government okay, and installed uh, 
historically Russia's enemy in there right and we talked about what took place there where they said they tried to commit genocide and Russian speaking Ukrainians it was a civil war that turned into a hot war Russia all this time built connections with China built connections with India extremely important with South America with Brazil they came up with BRICS economically we're right now okay in 2022 we saw that the Russian currency is now considered in large part to be a reserve currency because you can buy Russian resources by using rubles instead of US dollars okay. under Trump no additional wars quiet quiet under Trump right really there's sanctions right there's sanctions Trump does some stupid shit giving away Golan Heights to Israel it's not there giving away parts of here oh yeah Morocco Morocco is uh, is a civil war as well right in Morocco and different places what happens when the Biden administration comes in what happens when the Biden administration comes in uh, their looting of Ukraine continues because under Obama they were looting Ukraine the same way they did to Russia in the 1990s okay the Western governments the Western powers they were doing to Ukraine but they were using Ukraine as a as a laundering money center okay Morocco um, Morocco is a civil war here with South Sahara uh, what's that country called anyway what's that region called okay and where we are right now is this if we're lucky will remain this and will not expand but I think it's going to expand okay that's uh, the quick history speedy Gonzalez style without having to look things up and uh, uh, and look up everything I said I might have my dates a little bit wrong I might have different coalitions <laughs> wrong coalition of the willing was Iraq war two I believe not Iraq war one uh, but anyway it is what it is okay aside from that what else should we add on this map I haven't caught up with the chat what's up do you have some good remedies that help with okay Bob hope you keep on posting the same thing oh no we got a spammer going on here okay Bob hope I'm gonna time you out let's see if we can do it can we time you out oh man lots of Western Sahara it's uh what's it called yeah Western Sahara I think it's the conflict here the tart I forget the name I'm sorry I'm bad with names first time chat Larissa where are you from I'm in Canada I'm in Canada okay I'm in Canada I'm all the way down to the chat gang if there's anything I was I missed directed towards me please let me know elder God Chicho I need some more blue on the map please let's find out blue where are the peaceful places gang seriously what's going on in Antarctica good question we don't know dizzy moth Meritaria isn't Merit no 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 not Meritaria there's an isn't Meritaria so southern Meritaria I looked into this a few years ago when it was going on and uh, my accent on that fires way up okay gang where do we got blue let's put a blue somewhere let's put blue we need blue we need blue it's sad uh, to be occupied and it was a former Spanish colony yeah okay I say let's invade North Central Islands Net no Netherlands is not blue Netherlands is fucking wars it's orange Netherlands is orange Netherlands is saying they're gonna send fighter jets to Ukraine okay no Switzerland is orange Switzerland is orange perps meritatious um, uh, Marat, 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 Chile maybe Chile is uh, to a certain degree civil war Peru uh, Paraguay Paraguay and Uruguay as far as I know they're blue Chile 
there's major issues there in Chile. Paraguay and Uruguay blue for sure. No, Egypt's I think uh, to a certain degree civil war. I wouldn't. Uh, Egypt could turn into a hot war, quite like full on civil war, quite rapidly. Yeah, Antarctica is a is a what do you call it? Uh, military free uh free zone but i wouldn't uh, we really don't know what's going on in antarctica we could put a balloon in antarctica but i wouldn't want to live in antarctica uh, so singapore singapore let's get some blues going on that's okay we'll put you know what if you want let's put blue in antarctica that's on Ar antarctica up there let's put blue in antarctica where else well where else we need blues You're right oh my god bangladesh singapore singapore indonesia certain parts of civil war yeah that's our chart oh i gotta time out this bob guy he keeps on I'm out. Bob. Bob Pope. Bob Pope, I'm timing you out. Hopefully, you won't be able to post. Boop, 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 boop. Indonesia? Philippines? Papua New Guinea? What about a blue for Australia? No, Australia is a war. Us, well, supporting war anyway. Australia will join any war that the Europeans get into. No, Australia, we decided that they're, they're orange, big time. Yeah, it only shows up for me for some reason, uh, Aldegoth. You're right, we can be 100% certain about whether Antarctica is funding any militaries. Yeah, Bhutan, Bhutan. Bhutan's up here, isn't it? Well... How about here? French Guinea, Suriname, Guyanan, Guyanan. Are these are these as far as we know blue? Uh, Plutocrus Australia had a uh, had long had for a long time its neutrality doctrine, but in more integrated in the collective West. Yeah. Joe Chicho, apparently there's a conflict between Indonesia and the Free Papa movement. First time I've heard. Yeah, there is. Indonesia has, has serious issues uh, in certain parts. Uh, there's so many islands <laughs> there. Right? Ah, oh, Bob Pop's still appearing. I think it's a bot. I'm going to ban. Ban. Bob hope hopefully they won't show we got one of these last time too okay war Sri Lanka is civil war right would you say Sri Lanka civil war India what about India southern India peace Peaceful, as far as I know. Northern India could be problematic. I mean, we should have probably had a color for just collapse. Sri Lanka is definitely civil war. Yeah, Sri Lanka is civil war. I would say India, northern India. Uh, wow. Well, what should we put India as? Blue? blue india has always had some kind of conflict going on right but pakistan is yellow most stuff yeah pakistan 
Pakistan and India, northern India, I would say yellow. We need more blue. Where is a blue? Jordan, yeah, Jordan could be considered blue, but Jordan has a military base. You major U.S. military base there. So Jordan, if anything, it's uh, it's not a civil war, but it's definitely supporting wars, right? Larissa, Australia, Austria, and NATO officially formally quote corporation. Corporations began when cooperation began when Austria joined the Partnership for Peace (PFP) program in 1995 and the Euro-Atlantic Partnership Council. A multilateral, oops, missed it, multilateral uh, form for dialogue that brings. Oh my God, that Bob thing was crazy. It still kicked me up. I can't believe still deny allow deny i'm gonna deny Doing. how does how did these bot things this guy still get through it's crazy taiwan taiwan already in there taiwan's uh a yellow taiwan's yellow countries among panama hmm good question panama Costa Rica blue. Costa Rica blue? What did you say, Panama? Costa Rica blue. Central America could see major problem. Like Honduras Civil War. Right? <laughs> Scotland. Well, yeah, what about Scotland? Uh, Honduras, Honduras Civil War, right? Costa Rica doesn't even have a military. I don't know. Bob acting. Costa Rica, Romania. No, Romania is a puppet state. I mean, look at what they did to Andrew Tate. Red? You would say Romania red? <laughs> I would say Romania Romania is uh, is orange. I think I would call Romania orange. Bulgaria, I mean Bulgaria orange. Hungary uh, Hungary I would say it's it's not orange yet. It's not civil. Maybe Hungary's blue. Right? Bulgaria orange. Okay. Romania we already put on there, didn't we? Yeah, Romania we already got as orange. Bulgaria orange. What about Greece? Cyprus, I would say, is still a civil war. Right? Scotland will uh, will get independent and become blue one day. Hopefully, I hope. Hungary orange. Hungary orange. Okay, Hungary orange. Larissa says, far right government in Hungary. Well, I wouldn't call them far right. I would call them people that don't want to wage war on Russia and don't want to do everything that the the oligarchs in Brussels say. Right? John, they do not have military. They try to stay out of pretty much everything awesome. Madagascar, Madagascar. Let's do Madagascar blue. Madagascar has some issues, but we'll put it blue because we don't know too much about it. Greece? Uh, Greece will do whatever the EU tells it to do. Madagascar blue. For Indonesia, we have to find out where the civil war, the unrest is. Uh, same with Malaysia. Malaysia is blue. Malaysia blue? Yeah. Malaysia blue? Greece and Turkey have some tensions don't they yeah greece should be orange greece should be orange because it'll do i think it's decided to send military 
to Ukraine. Fighting for island states. Helda Goss, like, fighting for island states. Hilarious. Hungary tries to keep out of the uh, collective West war. I hope, I hope so too. Uh, this is going to Greece. Greece is orange. Greece will do whatever the EU tells it to do until things change. Right? South Africa. Yeah, what about South Africa? South Africa, civil war. South Africa is a mess. What should we put South Africa? Canada is orange. Canada is sending military. Canadian tanks are already there. At least we have four tanks we sent them. <laughs> and other things. Yeah. Malaysia neutral, I think. Malaysia neutral? Malaysia blue? Malaysia blue. Malaysia blue. Malaysia. Hey. What the hell? Oh, I lost Malaysia. There we go. <laughs> I was like, where's Malaysia? Oh, Thailand. Thailand blue. Thailand blue? Thailand blue for now. Uh, let's see where their ninjas are sent. Thailand? Thailand blue gang? I would say South Africa is borderline red. Yeah, it's yellow, I would say. It's not in war with anybody else. Alberta is blue. <laughs> awesome. Plutonic Pluris. Yeah, Alberta is Saskatchewan. Don't be distracted by this UFO nonsense. Yeah, don't be distracted by this UFO nonsense. Uh, who are we doing blue? I forgot. Uh, blue, blue. Thailand. 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 Bangkok. Thailand. Boink. Thailand blue. For now. Thailand blue for now. Uh, is Thailand under martial law? Thailand is, uh, is... I don't think it's under martial law right now. Is it, Joe? Remember the Battle of Los Angeles. Yoda. What about the country named Chad? Chad. What about Chad? Chad, Chad, right here. I don't know what's going on in Chad right now. See, here's the thing. All the countries surrounding Congo. Oh, we have to look at each one. Angola is civil war. Last time I checked, Angola was a civil war. What about Chad? Is Chad blue? Wait, isn't Japan having a population crisis and on the brink of not being able to maintain social functions? Japan is in trouble, yeah. Japan's orange. Japan's joined the war on Russia. Right? Battle of LA was the name of one of the most important battles in the Mexican-American War. Ah, was it? I thought you were talking about the, uh, the riots. Rodney King riots, maybe. I already had breakfast. Philippines? What about the Philippines? What about the Philippines? Philippines, certain parts are like... Pawn. I wish Pawn was here. Philippines. What about Philippines? Are we clear on the Philippines? The Philippines could flip on a dime. Be either a civil war or full out war. But let's put it blue for now. Blue. Philippines. Yeah, do we agree? How about Papua New Guinea? How about Papua New Guinea? That is really strange though, considering there was a huge deposit of lithium discovered in the area recently. I'm sure nothing's up. Where? Lithium was discovered in the Philippines? Or where, uh, Yoda? Wait, what, Japan turned puppet? Oh yeah, Japan's puppets. Japan has some of the sanctions on Russia, I believe and they're talking about and mainly it's because of china right their fear of china but japan's i think trying to pass uh, sorry um yeah japan's uh i think trying to pass legislation where they can start building up their military again uh, japan's going hot right can we all be more like iceland well i don't want to be like iceland they're like 98 percent injected no i did i did used to think Iceland was was good uh, in large part because they sent bankers in 2008 financial scam it's the only Western country I know of that they sent bankers to jail right scammers to jail right T 
Timor and Burundi. Burundi. Where's Timor and Burundi? Here somewhere. Where are we? What about these African, Western African countries? Nambia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Civil War, Mozambique, Zambia, Tanzania, Tanzania, Tanzania. An amazing documentary, Darwin's Nightmare, about Lake Victoria. If you guys haven't never seen this documentary, watch it. It's frightening. It's called uh, Darwin's Nightmare. Darwin's Nightmare. Yeah, uh, Larissa, we're not going to talk about injections in this stream. I just dropped that because Iceland has the advantage to be an island village. Yeah, and a low population in the fishing village. So sh unless the fish stocks completely de deplete, they should be able to feed themselves. Western Africa tends to be stable. Yeah, to a large part, except for Sierra Leone. Is there still civil war going on? Uh Senegal Cameroon where's Cameroon I lost Cameroon oh there's Cameroon Cameroon I talked to some Japanese people on Twitter in Japan Japanese they're all for building their military up and kicking American out really Nagushka John, most of Central Africa is under insurgent control. Yeah, resources, right? Resources, resources, resources. Right. <laughs> Larissa, <laughs> I got a video out there, right? Uh, about the word you used. It's a, it's a slur word, by the way. <laughs> I wouldn't use it. Right? <laughs> Look into the data, Larissa. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. I hope you join us one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is our conflict? Finish, dude. Uh, Cheryl, no civil war in Sierra Leone, but it's still struggling. So, yeah, I wouldn't, like, to me, a, a blue should indicate it's a safe place to go to live. Right, is Sierra Leone a safe place to go to live? It's not a war. Wow, that's not our definition. I guess it was supposed to be no war, right? Okay, should we put blue? Should, do we dare put blue on Sierra Leone? Uh, a Troy, is this uh, list only for countries that are involved with the Ukraine war or any? No, any, any, any war, right? Uh, so, for example, Qatar didn't uh is not involved in ukraine as far as i know right but it is in conflict with saudi Arabia to a certain degree right and it did support isis in iraq is it still supporting isis covertly i don't know bhutan 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 we had bhutan hold on where is bhutan why am i i'm drawing a blank bhutan 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 is in asia Bhutan, Bhutan. No, Bhutan's up here. There it is, Bhutan. Yeah, 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 Bhutan's peaceful. That's right, Bhutan's peaceful. I just had a friend that came went there. She said it was amazing. Bhutan. Bhutan is peaceful. Bhutan is peaceful. Thank you for that. Uh, who said that, Bhutan? where the bhutan person go bhutan joe thank you very much joe yeah yeah bhutan no blue for sierra leone yeah safe to live for whom for whom <laughs> yeah i don't think sierra leone can be blue next to nepal 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 blue nepal should be blue yeah nepal blue Man, I hope a war doesn't break out with China. If it does, all these countries are going to turn red. Because it's not going to be contained in Taiwan and China and stuff. Like, you know, operations are going to be taking place all over the place here, right? Uh, 
Sierra Leone is definitely a civil war. I think it would be a civil war. Cheryl, safe for expats or safe for people from the na uh, from the nation? I don't know. Good question. Is Austria orange? Austria should be orange. Yeah, I think we have. Have we put Austria as orange as well? We haven't yet, but we should. Austria is orange as well. Vienna. I've been to Vienna. Very beautiful. But Austria will do what is told by the rulers in Brussels, right? right. Norway in their box sport is going, yeah, Norway, Norway, fuck, Norway should be red. According to um, Seymour Hirsch, they they were involved in blowing up the Nord Stream pipelines, right? Like, it should be red, but let's put Norway as orange as well. Right? Norway orange. Denmark orange. Denmark has sent weapons, haven't they? Talk Polaris. Thank you, by the way, uh, Troy. Uh, where am I putting this guy? Uh, oh, yeah, Denmark. Boink. Denmark, too, will do whatever the EU tells it to do. Yes, I would say Austria is sufficiently enough integrated with the collective West and NATO partner partnership to be orange. Orange supports war. Thank you for that. Give me a Siggy. You got to our thing would you set up cambodia mm, good question what's going on in cambodia i don't know what's going on in cambodia gang what's going on in cambodia vietnam vietnam chill vietnam peaceful yeah what's going on in cambodia but uae what about uae peaceful uae peaceful I think UAE peaceful too for now. I thought, you know, I say maybe orange, but we gotta have one country that's peaceful there. And Vietnam blue. Where are we at? I lost it. There we go. Vietnam blue. Now, what about Cambodia? Cambodia blue. Baltic states are orange, yeah. Kazakhstan, I don't know Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan had civil war going on, but it was more a proxy war, right? Kazakhstan was uh, definitely, it's stabilized now. Are they going to go after it again? I don't think they can. Cambodia blue. Some people might say that Kazakhstan is not blue, right? Uh, Plutonic Plurus. Orange are suppliers of weapons, money, etc. and supporters of an ongoing war, yeah. UAE. UAE would put Oman? What about Oman? Yeah, nice city, but kind of weird people. How about uh, Oman? Oman Blue. Right? Bhutan first. It's the home of the archery now. Is it? Okay. So Plutonic Plurus uh, mentioned Bhutan first. Okay, cool. So thanks, Plutonic Plurus. And I think Joe for bringing it back up again because I missed it. I read it and I remember it and then I missed it. Laos, what about Laos? I don't think there's anything going on in Laos. Is there anything serious going on in Laos? Is Laos pretty peaceful? Plutonic Plurus, Kazakhstan was maybe on the brink of revolution or induced regime change, but is kept in order by Russia maybe. Yeah, it has been. Is it going to stay? Red is hot war going on right now. Hot war. Like tanks and bombs and stuff blowing up. What's going on with humans? What's going on with humans? Good question. We're under hypnosis. Detroit. Denmark has sent wep weaponry to Ukraine and also sent 1,000 soldiers to the Russian border in Latvia. Oh, stupid idiots. 
Angola and Cheryl, Angola and Namibia are pretty stable. Angola and Namibia are pretty stable? Okay, cool, we do. Far cry from the time when uh, they were at war with South Africa, eh? Namibia, Botswana, Angola. Angola, Namibia. I like the blue. Blue is good. Bahamas. <laughs> Bahamas blue. As far as I know, it's going to be pretty stable. But it is a banker money laundering operation. But let's do Bahamas. I had a chance to go to Bahamas. I had a friend that lived there for a while and I never went. I kicked myself. I should have gone. Laos is peaceful. Laos is peaceful. Let's do Laos. Let's do Laos. Where is Laos? Why am I missing Laos here? Laos, Laos. There it is, Laos. Laos. I like the blue. Good idea, Elder God. We need more blue, 100%. Afghanistan Yemen war Yemen is hot war Afghanistan civil war do we have Indonesia we do have Indonesia but we haven't decided what to do with this certain parts of Indonesia are war certain parts are blue uh, I don't know which parts are war which parts are blue I'm sorry I just have to ask this question how are we Denmark the stupid idiots by supporting Ukraine how is the Western Europe all of them supporting you what the F oh. crazy Cuba is peace involved with Angola yeah once Cuba. Cuba is peaceful what did we say was this was Haiti civil war Cuba is peaceful Cuba is definitely peaceful one of the safest places to travel in the world, without a doubt. Belize? What about Belize? Are we doing all of the 40 or so countries in the Caribbean? Well, the ones that, like, is there 40? Well, Dominican Republic, St. Lu Luciana, St. Martin. Where's St. Martin? St. Martin's here somewhere. Uh, Puerto Rico. Ganada, Barbados. I don't know. Should we just put some blues here? Because they're not a war. It's all blue, isn't it? There is no civil war in any of them. Hooray, mom! <laughs> this is first one. North of Thailand. Yeah, found it. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Hello, monkey time. Hope you're doing well. Kind of surprised to see Mongolia is blue. They're not involved with China or Russia war. No, they're not, as far as I know. Ireland, Ireland, we put orange because we're supporting USCI operations and they're they're using the military base there and they will do what the EU tells them to do unless they get out. Right? Can you do about Ireland? What bugs do you get? <laughs> RDBG2. <laughs> You got you got the automod zapped you. Can you please put shits on the UK? Uh, Ireland in conflict with UK for centuries now, isn't it? That's what happens when the UK when they try to annihilate, commit genocide on the people, right? 
<laughs> Elder God, I want to sleep tonight with enough blues in my dreams. <laughs> nice, yeah, I know. I've got to decide where to go if war keeps on going the way it is. Ireland would be neutral 100%. I don't know, Monkey Times. I don't know. I don't, I don't see Ireland being neutral right now. Ireland is doing everything that the EU is telling it to do. So Ireland is definitely not staying neutral, right? It's not staying neutral. Larissa, if there was no support to Ukraine, Putin wouldn't invade more European countries and probably trigger a NATO war. Uh, no, Larissa. N Russia has been trying to avoid this this war this conflict for eight years they signed minsk one minsk two and ukraine signed it germany signed it france signed it okay they signed it to give partial autonomy to the russian-speaking ukrainians and crimea and they nagged on the promise and they came out both germany france other uh signatory nations came out and said they were they were they were lying to russia they were never gonna go for peace here they were just buying time to arm ukraine ukraine western ukraine so western ukraine could commit genocide and russian-speaking ukrainians in the east and crimea right no putin is barely doesn't even want to go any further west doesn't even want to get kiev why would russia continue westward they wouldn't it's just propaganda it's just basically bullshit that the media and the warmongers the neocons are feeding western population uh larissa don't listen to it it's bullshit look into uh what western ukraine has been doing in eastern ukraine for the last eight years they killed they were bombing civilian towns. civil war western ukrainians were waging war on eastern ukrainians bombing civilian cities they killed fifteen thousand ukrainians until russia stepped in it does not start and end with just ukraine and as long as nato does not continue to push eastwards it ends in ukraine it had a oh, ukraine it was always going to end at ukraine it was always going to end at ukraine got kicked up monkey time i understand what you are saying bro but the government wouldn't openly join a war against anyone unless someone declared war in ireland however ireland would 100 percent be pro-europe and would help out in some way in world war ii ireland was very pro uh, yeah yeah i agree that's why we have it uh, on that part yeah Ireland is orange because it's supporting the war. It's not a hot war, but it's supporting the war. Is it going to send military hardware? Most likely. Is it going to send funding? Most likely. Is it going to send uh, trainers, experts? Most likely. Right? Is it going to send foot soldiers? Hope it doesn't go there. Malta. What about Malta? I don't know anything about Malta. These guys up here, they're all orange. Jamaica, what about Jamaica? What about Jamaica? Hmm? Jamaica blue? Jamaica blue. Uh, Victor, the gamer. Uh, Ukraine, Western Ukrainian governments the puppets there they came out and they said any russian speaking ukrainian needs to leave ukraine that's genocide they banned russian russian being taught in schools they banned russian speaking uh they told russians to leave ukraine they burned in odessa in odessa they burned russian-speaking ukrainians alive in a building because they were russian-speaking ukrainians they were russian-speaking ukrainians they burned them alive 
It's like in Canada, if Western Canadians or English speaking Canadians started burning French speaking Canadians alive because they were French speaking, that's genocide. That's genocide. There is no other word for it. That is genocide. When a nation does it, it's genocide. When a government does it, it's genocide. Thanks for clearing that up. I love the content. Ah, oh, my pleasure. Thank you for being here. Chicho, it's a bit rough, isn't it? Lich Thimblawa. Oof, I can't even pronounce that. Lich, how are you doing, Lich? So how is humanity able to solve this? You are showing me all the conflict. You can show me how to breathe seed peace. We can breathe peace by refusing to push our ideologies on other peoples and other nations, right? Why, why, why is NATO constantly pushing eastward towards Russia, right? Why are they constantly pushing towards Russia? Who's instigating this? right we need to hold our countries our politicians accountable for their crimes against humanity we haven't how do we how do we bring peace by holding war criminals and those who commit crimes against humanity accountable so for example okay the western world when they went into afghanistan they started taking people out of afghanistan innocent people out of afghanistan sending them to black sites all over the world and torturing them right obama obama when he came into power okay he said ha, 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 we tortured some folk let's move on no when you find people that commit war crimes that commit crimes against humanity you must hold them accountable otherwise they will come back and do it again which is what we're seeing right now right that's the first place we have to begin accountability right accountability of what we know so far what's the precursor to that is transparency right what who 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 name one person that we know of that has been trying to bring transparency to the world who is it who is it julian assange right julian assange journalist publisher that is trying to bring transparency into our world and what did we do what did we do united states in collaboration with the uk and sweden and australia crucified him and are crucifying him in the uk right crucifying him in the uk which is why every 15 minutes we have a little pop-up show up that says free assange free assange free assange because julian assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capital as power to humanity something that we desperately need in our societies why do we need it because we have to see peace we have to bring peace right for more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or countless resources available online that document what is released. He's released information about, Wikileaks has released information about the United States, about Canada, about Russia. Did you know that because of Wikileaks, multiple other organizations have come out and have been leaking information about some of the psychopaths that are running our world? One of them is Project Vratas. The other one was Panama Papers. What was one of the things that the Panama Papers revealed? Panama Papers that came out, by the way, in Malta, the journalist got assassinated by a car bomb, right? In Malta. One of the journalists that worked on the Panama Papers. What was one of the bits of information that the Panama Papers revealed? That Zelensky, the psychopath in charge of Ukraine right now, his net worth back in 2018 was $600 million and he had like 20 or 30 homes around the world. This the piece of shit wearing a green t-shirt and turning to the world and wanting to speak at venues, at events that are music festivals, arts festivals, begging humanity to send them more billions of dollars in weapons 
to commit genocide in eastern Ukraine and continue the war that could have been easily stopped, right? That piece of shit, his net worth in 2018 was $600 million and he owned anywhere between 20 to 30 homes around the world. That's transparency. Have we held this piece of shit accountable? Russia's about to, right? I hope they do. I hope they're able to hold them accountable, the people who have brought war on Russia, on Ukraine, on the Western world, at the beginning stages, really. Not even beginning stages this is war this is what you see when you're talking about global warfare by the way right. it's crazy it's crazy larissa larissa is greek is it greek i am from the uk salutations uh monkey time you are a teacher by any chance you seem like a wise teacher i i teach mathematics and I share as much information as I can. And whatever I say, take it with a grain of salt and do your own research. But I've done a lot of research. Pro gamer, the definition of genocide is genocide is the intentional destruction of a people whole or in part. Yeah. There's like three or four definitions. Ukraine, what Western Ukraine was doing to Eastern Ukraine defined as genocide defined as genocide elder god john wick chapter four will clock in at two half hour, two hours and 49 minutes sorry i got excited ah, i'm excited too i own the john wick comics that they came out i bought multiple i bought all the variant covers for number one john wick is a fantastic series too bad about the russian angle but victor genocide is killing them as a whole or a big part exiling a person group is not just it is genocide it is ethnically cleansing a region is under the umbrella of genocide victor it is look it up i've looked it up multiple times unless they've changed it the un has changed it because it's like changing the definition of multiple things right it's like the u.s two con uh, two two consecutive quarters of negative no no it's not a recession and other words chile peru argentina argentina is civil war argentina is on the verge of collapse and we'll see where it goes argentina would be a civil war okay availability i can't fucking believe azov got officially taken off the extremist list thank you very much for the bits Twitch, twitching Jason, twitching Jason, how you doing? Uh, so available says, I can't fucking believe Azov got officially taken off the extremist list and officially integrated into the Ukraine army. These are the same neo-Nazi fucks who were fucking with rights, uh, right sector and he uh, heavily Russo uh, and it's heavily Russophobe. Yeah, they, the atrocities they committed. Wow. Some of the stuff that I read, what Ukraine did for war in World War II, the Ukrainian Nazis did in World War II. Wow, it's compatible to what the Japanese were doing uh, when they were they had occupied China and what's that place called? Whoa, horrendous, horrendous. Lich. So you want to say I have to construct a mightier ideology in order to forget another ideology? I don't know uh Elgar, russia's main antagonist has always been one country look to them for the truth larissa i don't think that will make peace it would just create more war no Lar larissa we have to do transparency if that's what we're talking about edward snowden as well indeed oh i'm gonna allow that availability the auto mod zaps it maybe that's why i'm seeing appear multiple times Da, 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 da. Twitching Jason. Da, 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 da. Oh, hold on. Oh my god. Three hour John Wick. <laughs> Twitching Jason. Oh my god. Three hour John Wick. Awesome. Remember to also use your brain, as I say uh, to our kids, young adults at work. Finish, dude. Yeah. Yeah. The pro gamer, the Oxford Dictionary, the Oxford Dictionary says that genocide is is 
um what is it let's read it let's read it let's read it oh where'd it go crap i got knocked up again ah oxford dictionary says the murder of a large group of people from a particular na nation or ethnic group with the aim of destroying the nation or group go beyond that single definition from the from oxford dictionary and i think oxford dictionary will have multiple layers of it right it's like there isn't just one definition absolute definition of certain words right it could be applied in multiple places ethnic cleansing you could throw it in there right and they were and they were killing western ukraine were killing eastern ukrainians they're, they're still bombing civilian centers right da, 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 da. Uh, larissa how do you do fair research seeing as the internet is geared towards intentionalizing uh internalizing us into an echo chamber only allowing us to see information that suits our own thoughts and ideologies i do multiple sources first of all don't use google for any searches right unless you're doing your google maps you're trying to get somewhere that's fine if you're looking for a movie trailer you can go to youtube right if you want to do research serious research into any geopolitical event any historical event stuff you got to use uh, search engines that aren't centralized controlled right so forget google forget youtube right youtube has been purging shitload of videos on everything right uh use brave use start page for your searches don't just get stuff that are sound bites right anything that government media says don't believe it no no way no how you gotta do your own research look at look at the propaganda used to start every to justify all the other wars and assume they're doing the same thing right now but more right incubators in iraq right for gulf war one yellow cake in iraq for gulf war two right libya viagra soldiers are popping viagra and doing whatever for to annihilate libya right yemen iran is supporting iran is creating chaos saudi arabia starts worrying yemen right where else oh ukraine is fighting for freedom and justice really really all those people in the western world that are pushing the lgbtq agenda i dare you i dare you for you guys to go down kiev go there bring out your pride flag put on your uh purple triangle dress up the way you do right and i've been to pride parades i published i published the first superhero gay comic book series continuing series comic book right i know that i've been to pride parades i have many gay friends many many lesbian friends that i party with all nighters having an awesome time right i fucking dare you to dress up the way you do the way i partied with you in vancouver i dare you to go to ukraine and kiev and walk down the street and say pride parade i dare you you're right i dare you All right look into the excuses they use to wage war and realize that they're lying to you okay realize that they're lying to you twitching jason just lurking oh man i'm going all the way down gang now this i think what happens with this auto mod as soon as it automatically denies something it keeps on popping it up for some reason it keeps on yeah that sucks oh i gotta go all the way down to the bottom what the f okay i gotta grab this thing okay i'm all the way down to the bottom Woo. how are we doing for time what's our uptime we started late oops that's not how you do it <laughs> i don't know how long we've been going okay that's an command 
uh, Joe Chicho, Bolivia, Uruguay, Paraguay, Ecuador, uh, Guyana, Sayana. Okay, Bolivia. Bolivia is peaceful. It wasn't chaos, civil war. Kick to death in Kiev. And there are actually Nazis in Ukraine. Yeah. Bolivia. Peace. Venezuela we got as uh, civil. Civil war. And it is. Bolivia peaceful. I've been doing that bang for two hours and 40, 14 minutes. Two hours and 14 minutes. Okay. So we're going to call it quits soon. Uh, Plutonic where Russian people are said to be not so badly informed. There's propaganda too, but still valid information. And Russia has a lot of historic experience. Yeah. Where do you have the facts about the killing of Eastern Ukrainian people? You sound pro Russian. Uh, Eastern, it's man. Look into, uh, look up Scott Ritter. Scott Ritter talks about it. Uh, look up the Duran here. The Duran. Check, follow their work. Okay, seriously, the Duran Doer search, follow their work on Rumble, they're on BitChute, they're on SensorTube as well. Uh, check out their work and you'll get a good feel. You might It might take you a while, but like uh, Pro Gamer, that's a fact. No one denies that, right? It's just, it's just not being covered on CBC, NBC, Fox, and all this stuff. But Russian Ukrainians since the 2000... 14 coup that was that overthrew a democratically elected government that was installed by nato by western powers especially you uh united states right with john mccain going there handing out cookies with Chris, uh newland and stuff like this right they put in the nazis in power right and as soon as they got in they basically said ukraine is no longer a bilingual country russian is no longer going to be taught right the eastern ukraine said hey, what the hell what the fuck's going on and then uh crimea went for uh independence donbass region wanted autonomy the whole thing started the shit hitting the fan nato was arming ukraine and they started killing off russian-speaking ukrainians like it, it's a fact like it's not it's not anything that anyone uh is not is, is denying <laughs> victor russia is the one bombing civilians on a day on a daily not even targeting military sites just straight out of part no okay western ukraine was bombing the donbass region since 2014-15 are we writing that off we're saying no it didn't happen everything started on february 24th 2022 is that what we're saying so we're saying fuck the last eight years of western backed western ukraine nato backed regime killing russian speaking ukrainians we're gonna we're gonna say no they didn't burn russian speaking ukrainians alive in odessa we're gonna start the clock on february 24 2022 because putin bad that's that's the fucking level of intelligence we have yikes yikes fantasia kingdom thank you very much for the follow what's the legend for the color tag the legend someone post the legend please red hot war bombs explosions going off orange supporting war either financially militarily soldiers equipment yellow civil war blue we can go to safe live and hopefully the war won't go there. Okay. Plutonic Pluris. One can be pro-Russian or pro-Ukrainian government and still acknowledge contexts that aren't in line with your ideals. Yeah. I Once this thing's over, I have a feeling a lot of Western, the, the psychopaths that have been waging this war uh, are, are going to be hunted down in Ukraine. They destroyed Ukraine. I have Ukrainian friends. They're like Ukrainians aren't stupid. They know what's going on, right? Oh my brother was attacked from behind in Kiev. 
robbed and left on the streets. Oh, he now lives in Romania. Mugging can happen anywhere, though. Availability, that's such a misdirection of what actually happened in Russia. Do, 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 do. Red, here we go. Dizzy moth. So red, act of war. Orange, supports war. Yellow, civil war. Blue, peace. Yeah. The mass formation psychosis is strong. Nagoshka. <laughs> From the Duran as a as a questionable source based on far right wing basis. The Duran far right wing <laughs> promotion of Russian propaganda, right wing. Oh my God! Are you kidding me? Okay, read uh, Scott Ritter, an American, American, American weapons inspector. Scott Ritter. Here, read Scott Ritter. <laughs> you don't want the Duran right wing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Scott Ritter look up Scott Ritter uh, th there's so much resources maybe I need to make another video talking about uh, the resources I use uh, to do research uh, look up uh, uh, the gray zone the gray zone <laughs> like <laughs> the gray gray zone like there there's so much resources out there like Stop. First order of business, stop watching CNN, BBC, CBS, stop reading The Guardian, The Independent, stop consuming Western corporate propaganda. You're being brainwashed. And if you're only getting your news from links you find on Facebook, you're an idiot <laughs> because that, that shit is censored, right? They, 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 they delete it before you even see it, before like it don't, they don't even send it out, right? First time chat. Oh, we missed something. Where to go? First time chat. Even OSCE reports admits majority casualties was on separate sides. Civilians, I mean, yeah. Puerto Rico. I think we put Puerto Rico blue, didn't we? Dominican Republic. What about Dominican Republic? Where is Puerto Rico? What the hell? I lost Puerto Rico for some reason. My mind going mush. Maybe we'll continue this next week. We continue next week, gang? Should we do more? Should we do more map? Should we talk more about the map? Because we're going to call the stream soon. Funny how two different gamer that people started chatting at the same time with the same talking points to start starting sentences with capital letters just a coincidence Nagushka. just a coincidence there's nothing remotely extremist neither left or right nor global globalist etc but yeah it's crazy calling the duran right wing that's gonna be one of the funniest shit i ever heard <laughs> hilarious too funny Too funny. Adraman Madas Chicho, consider consider checking out the Palestine. Oh, dude, I've been linking it up. I've checked it out. Holy fuck! Wow, wow. I've been linking it up on our Gilded server. Uh, what I'm finding, some of the stuff. So go to our Gilded server. I've been linking it up in news, I think, and other people have been too. The maps, the it looked like a nuclear explosion, and man. The rail company offered $25,000 for the town as compensation. $25,000? That company is worth $55 billion. Stock has gone up very high in the last 10 years, right? Very high. I looked at it because I'm family might be thinking about shorting the shit out of it if there is any accountability in the system right they offer twenty five thousand dollars for the for the town to clean up the clean up the mess or compensation for problems right there are people reporting that in their house there's residue this residue all over their house they can't even live there this is toxic residue fish dying in, in the, this is a natural disaster on the same level as far as i see it same level okay maybe not a, as as it could be we don't know yet as the same level as the india um which chemical plant was it where the train derailment derailed and went into the factory and blew up and killed like tens of thousands of people the the ill effects of this is going to be uh, we don't know we don't know it's crazy it's crazy All right gang 
Adramadas. Hollywood just finished filming a movie in the same place as the train derailment. Uh, look up the new uh, trailer called What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the movie is already out, White Noise. It depicts almost the same event that happened, Madness. Yeah, the movie was already out, uh, Adramas. It came out like two two years ago, two, three years ago, four, something like that. I think it cost like a hundred. I, I looked at the thing, it cost a hundred million to make. It was a Netflix movie, I think. I looked at the trailer, it looks like shit. All the people there are annoying as fuck, right? <laughs> like, uh, but it's supposed to only had $35,000 at box office because it was Netflix. So I guess it wasn't released in the theaters or something, right? Uh, I'm scrolling as fast as I can to the bottom, gang. Because we've got to call the stream. Let's check it out. Where are we at? Where are we at? I'm at the bottom. I'm at the bottom. Everybody forgets Timor. Last I'm burning East Asia. I know. Where is Timor? I'm going to keep on looking at this map when we find other areas. Timor is down here somewhere. Mariana Islands. Fiji. Fiji is peaceful. Fiji. Let's, before we end it, let's put a little blue thing. Uh, Troy, cooking when? Um, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. Fiji. Fiji Island. Can you guys even see that? Yeah, it's there. Nice. Let's go to Fiji. Southeast Indonesia. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, that's a civil war. That's where the civil war is. Timor, right? Should we mock that off a yellow? Civil war? Yeah? Yeah, Woke America is stealing water, Fiji water. I've heard it's got good water. Might as well give it to the, uh, the, to the bottling companies, right? Timor, civil war? Are we adding this? Should I add this? Civil war? Timor? East Timor? Civil war? We need confirmation on this. I can't go go out and call everything civil war. We gotta make sure. I don't think it's a civil war anymore. It's not a civil war anymore? Okay, I'm keeping it down. No civil war. Let's turn all yellow tag in into blue. <laughs> it would be nice. <laughs> Hopefully one day. Yes, kind of independent sovereignty war maybe. Whole companies are called. Yeah, whole companies are called. They're not a call. They're just using people who are low IQ people to make money. Gang, let's call the stream. Let's call the stream. Apologies about the late start today. Um, had technical difficulties. No, take take time. Map needs to be correct. Yeah, yeah, we take time. We'll we'll look into it. Uh, the pro gamer. I know you see my messages, but neglect to read them. I. I don't know. I scrolled all the way down, man. Uh, what did you say? I am not going to trust a guy named Scott Ritter who is charged. Oh, God. Get serious. First of all, he's in dispute with, for that. And he's winning it. He's one of the people that won the court case, right? And when did he get charged with this stuff? It's the same shit that they charged Julian Assange with, right? <gasps> June, you can't trust. Him. I've had woke-ass, low-IQ people come up to me. Oh, Julian Assange was charged with rape. No, you, you, Lord, you, Sweden, the UK, United States, with Australia are trying to crucify a guy that was releasing information, trying to prevent war, right? And what he was charged with was because he didn't use a condom properly. Are you a dude? Have you ever used a condom? Did you use it properly all the time? Are you? Did you did did you use it proper? Did it fall off you every now and then? Did it? No, did it? No. You rape you? Did you do that? You piece of you need to go to UK and be tortured up your yin. I can't. Low IQ. Low IQ. Joke. Joke. You know what happens? Is centralized power when someone has a voice 
and they try to prevent their wars, they charge them with shit, right? Scott Ritter was the loudest voice trying to provide, uh, prevent Iraq War II from happening, right? From a million people being massacred, millions of people being turned into refugees, from this whole area blowing sky high. You low IQ fucking dumbasses, dumbasses. Gang, thank you for being here. We're on Patreon, Substack, Subscribe Star. You can follow the work there. For those of you that are supporting this work on those platforms as well as Twitch, thank you for being here. It is in large part because of your support that we're able to do what it is that we are doing. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And mods, 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 again, thank you for having our backs and being here. Salute to the mods, gang. We do announce these live streams 30 minutes, 45 minutes before we go live on Twitter, Minds, VK, Gap, Getter, and Parlor. You can follow the work there. For live streams, when we don't have any visuals, we do upload the audio to soundcloud.com forward slash Chicho is a podcast. And those podcasts should be available on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, and whatever you follow. Okay. We will be uploading this live stream to SensorTube, to BitChute, to Rumble, and to Odyssey. We'll see what happens when we load it on to SensorTube. Part one is doing whatever it's doing. And this is part two. And we do have a Gilded server. You're definitely welcome to join us on Gilded and follow uh, our work there, share information, get into discussions, okay? Learn and teach. That's the best way to be. Gang, I'm gonna keep this up. We continue this discussion. Uh, we'll do another live stream next week. Most likely, most likely, possibly, Saturday morning, but we'll see. We might do a live stream Friday night as well, but we'll see. Maybe do again next Monday, but we'll see. I'll figure it out, talk with my partner, see when I can fit in these live streams. One thing I want to do is I want to do a music live stream, and I want to thank you very much for the follow, Envy. Uh, Envy1, appreciate it. And Honk Honk. One thing I'd like to do is do another music music lyrics live stream where we're just reading war lyrics i came across uh, 99 red balloons the other day and i shared in my gilded server and that's a war song all right or talking about war so i like to do that as well we'll see if we can fit it in next week aside from that gang i hope you have a fantastic week i'll see you guys online i'll see you guys on gilded bye everyone